Before he was everyone's favorite granddad that the WWE would usher into a ring once a year to dance as awkwardly as your creepy uncle at your 16th birthday party, The Undertaker was a pillar of Vince McMahon's wrestling empire, a character so integral to the WWE's success that the company would have you believe that WrestleMania simply wouldn't exist without him. Go back to the period just before his fateful Brock Lesnar encounter, and The Undertaker was often involved in the show stealer and the main event of each WrestleMania card, notching victory after victory over seemingly endless top quality foes at the culmination of numerous high-caliber rivalries. Okay, so maybe not A-Train or Mark Henry, Giant Gonzalez or the Big Boss Man, but certainly Shawn Michaels and Triple H, right? Right? Naturally, this has come to make a match with The Undertaker a main event in of itself, and one of the biggest storylines for any wrestler to feature in on any given year. And while it has sometimes been tough for the WWE to keep the creativity flowing for new and interesting ways to set up a match for the dead man, there have been more than a few moments where mentioning his name on the road to WrestleMania has sent shivers down the spine. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic.com, and here are the top 10 Undertaker WrestleMania callouts. Join us! Number 10, Shane McMahon, WrestleMania 32. Two years ago, your legacy died. Who else remembers that pop Shane McMahon received when he returned to the WWE back in 2016? We do. That's why we've included everyone's least favorite sweaty middle-aged commissioner on our list. The return of Shane O'Mac was met with a huge ovation on Raw in 2016, with building blocks to an Undertaker feud being put in place soon after. Vince, unhappy with his son's disapproval of his product, thought he'd get his bitch, his words not mine, to do his fighting for him, pitting the phenom versus the prodigal son in hell in a cell. It was hardly the typical start to an Undertaker feud, and so, a few weeks later, in the midst of a much more typical Undertaker promo, Shane would stick his nose in to call out the most respected name in the industry, with the line, at WrestleMania two years ago, your legacy died. No amount of rich boy insults from the aging Taker could come back from that, and Shane was clearly so uncomfortable in delivering that line that he threw himself off a cell as punishment. Number 9, Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 25. Sometimes it's hell trying to get to heaven. In the first traditional call out of this list, Shawn Michaels took to the microphone on Raw in 2009. Shawn let us know that he was living heaven on earth. It was a sweet, welcome back, heartbreak kid moment for the legendary performer, topped with a call out that would lead to one of the showstopper's best ever matches and one of the biggest matches at WrestleMania 25. If there's anyone who should face the Undertaker at WrestleMania, you're looking at him. Michaels proudly and boastfully proclaimed. A few weeks later, in the midst of a tweener run of similar call outs, Michaels would be answered by a video package from The Undertaker in which the dead man would not so politely inform Michaels that sometimes it's hell trying to get into heaven. Number 8, Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 26. I made one mistake and it cost me everything. In December of 2009, the WWE had all but solidified Michaels vs. Undertaker from WrestleMania 25 as an all-time classic match by awarding it the highly coveted Slammy Award for Match of the Year. Stick with me. While accepting the award with a tone suggestive of Michaels' displeasure at losing the bout, Michaels gracefully accepted the trophy and turned to leave. Then, as if tempted by his own fate, the showstopper turned back to call out The Undertaker for the rematch of a lifetime, delivering the simple line of, you know what? I can beat him. The coming weeks and months would see Michaels scratch and claw his way to an Undertaker match in one of the most compelling stories of the year. His desperation summed up by the line, I only made one mistake. One mistake! and it cost me everything. This, of course, led to Undertaker refusing the challenge, only for HBK to take matters into his own hands. Sean entered the Royal Rumble and failed, finding himself eliminated by Batista and freaking out. So what did he do? That's right, he moved to SmackDown and forced his way into something called a six-pack challenge match for the WWE Championship. Oh no, sorry, that was John Cena's strategy. Michaels had something far darker in mind. He waited under the floor of the 2010 Elimination Chamber, I assume for the full pay-per-view, before bursting out to cost take of the World Heavyweight Championship. Sufficiently enraged, the dead man finally accepted, but only if HBK put his career on the line. Number 7, Kane, WrestleMania 20, Return of the Dead Man. Having buried The Undertaker alive at Survivor Series in 2003, Kane had found himself the subject of mind games from an entity we all knew and recognized as The Undertaker. A gong at the Royal Rumble was enough to distract Kane from victory in early 2004, and there were tamperings with Kane's usual turnbuckle pyro. There were even bolts of lightning to the stage. So, in keeping with the WWE's attitude of the time, Kane read a eulogy for his brother on SmackDown in an attempt to lay his soul to rest, exclaiming that The Undertaker was dead, and he was dead because he had become like us, the fans, a walking, talking, back stage politicking babyface. It wasn't a typical call out by any means and was met with a much more solid retort. A spooky video package that read, in 34 days, the dead will rise. 
again. Number six, Bray Wyatt, WrestleMania 31, The Man Comes Around. Having had a strong Royal Rumble run that included the early elimination of Rumble favorite Daniel Bryan in early 2015, Bray Wyatt soon turned his post-Wyatt family attention towards The Undertaker, in an attempt to make a name for himself in the upper echelons of the post-punk era of WWE. Calling out his illegitimate father, it's just hearsay, don't sue us, as being crushed until one week later, Undertaker responded in no uncertain terms with one simple sentence. The man comes around. It was a classic Johnny Cash line to set up an exciting feud and what should have probably been a much better encounter at the show of shows. Ultimately, this match probably wasn't helped by the fact that the entrances took place in lovely daylight, making it a little reminiscent of WrestleMania 9's showdown with Giant Gonzalez, aka the worst Undertaker street match of all time. Do not even question this. Number 5. Randy Orton, WrestleMania 21. Legend vs Legend Killer in the midst of a brief run as good guy opposite Triple H's heel evolution leader, an incredibly young Randy Orton was encouraged by the legendary superstar Billy Graham to go where no man had gone before, a message Orton would decipher as being his ticket to overcoming the legend of The Undertaker at WrestleMania 21. It would be legend versus legend killer, and Orton was so convinced that he was the man for the job that he RKO'd his on-screen girlfriend Stacey Keebler for merely hesitating before supporting Orton in his opinion that he could beat the Phenom. It would solidify a return to the dark side for the legend killer, and would actually as a call to arms for Randy Orton, who would call out Taker to a match at WrestleMania. The dead man would respond via a video package confirming their match at the granddaddy of them all. Number 4. Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 33 This is my yard now. We'd all heard the rumors and seen the story between The Undertaker and Roman Reigns set up at the Royal Rumble, so this isn't ranked as highly as it might have been had it been a surprise. Even so, Roman Reigns' challenge to The Undertaker was undisputedly one of the best. In the midst of a typical Undertaker rant, Reigns' former Shield music would hit and the big dog would head to the ring to say five simple words to the phenom. This is my yard now. Job done. It was an unpopular statement for sure, but Roman was greeted with even more heat when he repeated the trick on Raw after WrestleMania. Number 3. Kane, WrestleMania 14, Back from the Dead during the build-up to the first ever Hell in a Cell match between The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels, the dead man's longtime acquaintance and manager Paul Bearer would scream the famous words, He's alive! Kane is alive, Undertaker! Sorry. To begin a story that would see Kane rip the cell's door from its hinges in his first ever appearance and go on to dominate a reluctant Undertaker in the coming weeks. Then, after a brief run as a reconciled duo, Kane would use his newfound trust to lure The Undertaker in, chokeslam him into a casket, and set the casket on fire. It was a message sent as loud and clear as any in the history of the company, and was absolutely a call-out to remember. Number 2. CM Punk at WrestleMania 29 To Paul Bearer, you will always be perfect. When The Undertaker returned to Raw in full character to pay a fitting tribute to the recent real-life death of longtime friend and on-screen manager Paul Bearer in 2013, kneeling to his iconic urn in a final goodbye to one of the greatest non-wrestling characters in history, it was one pre-WrestleMania moment involving the Phenom that didn't seem to be leading to a WrestleMania match. That was until the famous rift from Cult of Personality echoed throughout the arena and CM Punk took to the stage to lay down his challenge for WrestleMania. I want to extend my heartfelt condolences for your loss at WrestleMania. To Paul Bearer, you will always be perfect. It was a call out so on the nose that the voice of the voiceless drew legitimate heat from many who had previously seen him as an iconic anti hero, solidifying his heel run as one of the greatest of the modern era and setting his feud alight heading into their show stealing WrestleMania 29 match. Number 1 Triple H, WrestleMania 27. The Silent Promo. Here it is, the most iconic Undertaker WrestleMania callout in history. The creme de la creme of how to begin a feud with The Undertaker down the road to the granddaddy of them all, and it features absolutely no dialogue zero words. For weeks, a mysterious 2 21 11 video package had aired on WWE television, creating a great deal of intrigue for what some had believed to be the company debut of Sting. What we got was in fact The Undertaker, who on that very date made his return to WWE with a WrestleMania match seemingly on his mind. He grabbed the mic, prepared to begin speaking his thoughts, and then it was time to play the game. Triple H made his return for the first time since the previous year's WrestleMania and rushed to the ring with an intensity only he can deliver to issue a challenge to The Undertaker using nothing but a stare down and a glance at the WrestleMania sign. 
The WWE had trusted its audience to understand Triple H's motivations for wanting to avenge his friend Shawn Michaels, whom The Undertaker had retired the previous year, and prove himself as the man to end the streak, thus creating a moment of pure magic between two of the most iconic names ever to step foot in a ring. So that's our list, let us know what you think in the comments below, and you can follow me on Twitter here. If you enjoy what we do at Cultaholic, you can pledge to our Patreon, that's patreon.com forward slash cultaholic, and most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.